Good morning. I'd like to thank you for joining me today as I discuss solving rational inequalities on the TI. <laughs> Clearly, I haven't had my coffee yet. So good. Anyway, we're going to be discussing solving rational inequalities using the TI Inspire. I can't tell you how many kids look at a problem like this and go, what? Say, what? And they're actually really, really relatively easy. So, uh, all of my these videos can be found at www.nkinfinity. Dot com. That's our website. My partner in crime is Miss Newman. I am Mr. Krause, and you guys know this. Class takes forever. So, Infinity. Our website is very simply nkinfinity.com. You just click on, and you see Miss Newman. She's right there. She's a rock and teacher. She's awesome. She's unbelievable. And there's this ball guy that you might be familiar with by now. Anyway, just go here. Click on uh, New York Teachers and TI Inspire videos. Click on that. And at some point, there's going to be a nice long list. I'm only up to four. I think I've got 12 videos done. My plan is I think I have like 20 more in the queue. They take a little bit of time to make. But anyway, um, here, I'll also show you here where you can purchase the calculator. Right now, it looks like it's about $129 on Amazon or $28 on Amazon. Seems kind of expensive until you realize you're going to use it for like four or five years. And it probably costs the same as your sneakers that are only going to last a year. Uh, and not only that, when you're done with high school and you decide to go off to school to be an art major or music major or whatever, you can always sell it to an underclassman for 80 or $90, get most of your money back, and be happy. If that's not good enough, you can rent it for a year um, through Texas Instruments. Okay, and, that's, and what you'll get is what I'm getting right here, and it's what I do. Um, it is, where is it, where is it, where is it? Oh, I didn't open it yet. It looks like this. Sorry, I haven't opened it yet. It'll, it'll open because it, we're going to be using it. Uh, it's the um, it's just a TI Inspire emulator. It just works right on your computer, but you have to have an actual computer for it. Anyway, let's get started. Uh, here's an SAT type of a question. What does that actually mean? I used to teach the SAT prep for a long time. What does that symbol mean when it says less than zero? Don't say, oh, it means less than zero. No, it doesn't. It means negative. Well, what does negative mean graphically? That's what we're going to talk about today. What does negative mean graphically? Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the algebraic approach, but I'm also going to show you the geometric approach so you can use your TI Inspire to do this as well. So if you just factored it, you would get x plus 2, x plus 3. You end up with x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 3. And probably you're going to have to show that work anyway. I, In my class, I call these my critical numbers. What, why are they critical? Because you have to have them on your, oops, you have to have them on your number line. Negative 3, negative 2, and then zeros over here probably somewhere. Probably not very good scale, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter about the scale. So you got to decide, first of all, it's less than not equal to, so you're going to put open circles. you got to decide, am I going this way? Is it an or statement? Or, if it's not an or statement, then perhaps then you're going to be connecting the dots. That's your decision to be made. Is it negative in between these two points, or is it negative on the outside of these two points. Well, let's use our calculator to figure it out. By the way, if you uh, got the TI from TI for $27 a year, this is what it would look like on your computer. Uh, really, it works exactly, exactly the same way the calculator does in class, uh, except you do it on your computer. You just have to have a computer available. And it does not work, I don't believe, on Chromebooks. You'd have to ask. Anyway, uh, I want a graph. So the easiest way is just hit B. See where it says B right here? So I'll go down here and hit B. And I'm going to type that in, x squared plus 5x, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now, you all should know that's going to be a parabola, and because the leading coefficient is just a positive 1 right here, it's opening up, enter, and there it is. Probably a bad example to use at first. Oops, I meant to just move this. But you'll notice right here, 
and right here in fact I'm gonna put those on there menu just show you real quick analyze graph and zero click click menu analyze graph zero in the middle click and click and you'll notice my two points of intersection my two critical numbers are negative two and two so graphically what does less than zero mean it means negative it's where the y values are negative so where are the y values are negative well what does negative mean graphically graphically it means below the axes so if I take a look at it like this where do my points go If I look at it like this, and I say, okay, negative means below the x-axis. Here's my x-axis right here. So I want to go below it. Well, below it is in between them. So between negative 3 and negative 2 is the solution to this answer. So I can just come over here. I know I need to connect the dots, and I'll write my answer as negative 3 comma negative 2 in interval notation. All right, let's do one more, maybe two more. I think I got two more. Two more. Oh, yeah, I got a really hard one. <laughs> All right, it seems really hard, it's not. So, yeah. If I'm gonna solve this one, if I'm gonna solve this one, I've gotta do this, let's see. Hmm. Bring the four over, so I get negative two, absolute value of x plus three, absolute value is less than or equal to negative four, divide by negative two, I get the absolute value of x minus 3 is greater than or equal to positive 2. Because remember, I divided by negative 2. And when you divide by a negative, the sign has to flip. And negative divided by negative is positive. Now you have to break it up. And you get x minus 3 is greater than 2 or equal to. And x minus 3 is less than or equal to 2. How many? Oh, negative 2. How many of y'all haven't solved these in a while? And then I get x is greater than or equal to 5. And over here I get x is less than or equal to 1. So if this is 1 and this is 5, less than or equal to 1 would be, looks like it goes this way. Greater than or equal to 5 looks like it goes that way. Well, that's the algebraic way. This is the algebraic way. Okay? But all it said was state the solution and graph it on the number line. It didn't say I had to go through all of this. I could just simply graph this thing. So let's take a look at it graphically. Uh, doc B. And then go back in. And we're going to type in negative 2 absolute value. It's right there. Absolute value of x minus 3. I can't remember. Plus 4 plus 4 and I graph it and you should have known that it was an upside down uh, absolute value function <coughs> excuse me so once again if I come over here and I say okay what does this mean then all three examples I'm going to change this one to greater than uh, this means negative graphically this means below x axis so if I had to sketch this look see that number one right there and over here what do you think that is let's check it out menu analyze graph zero click click there it is five right and this one's at one clearly right so aren't those the two numbers I came up with five and one and I want to know where it's negative well isn't it negative down here down below the axis and over here down below the axis and so that's why I put a closed circle at 5 and I said going to the right closed circle at 1 going to the left had it said positive I would have said oh that's positive positive means above the x-axis that would have been in between them now how do you write this as you could just write this or an in interval notation uh, this one would be negative infinity comma 1 oops that needs to be a bracket because it's equal to union um, 5 to positive infinity. All right, let's do one more. I, I am going to change this one to greater than. We'll just do that right away. We'll do a, we'll do a nice blue. Now we're doing red so you can actually see it. 
So we're going to do greater than. Greater than just means positive. Positive just means graphically above x axis. That's what positive means. All right. So let's take a look. Uh, my critical numbers, by the way, if I did this correctly, this is going to be x minus 4, x plus 2. So my two critical numbers for the top are going to be positive 4 and negative 2. And I still have one on the bottom as well. That's positive 1. So I'm going to have three critical numbers. So when I graph this thing, somehow it's going to hit that x-axis three times. So let's take a look at it. Doc B gets rid of the crap. Uh, go back in. Control division. That's not what I want. Control division. X squared minus 2x. X squared minus 2x minus 8 all over. I believe it was x minus 1. Let me sure it was minus 8. It was. I hit enter. Holy mackerel. What is that? I have no idea what that is. I'm gonna get I'm gonna zoom out. Well, what are my critical numbers? My critical numbers are four, negative two, and one. Uh, I don't really see it at four. Did I type this in wrong? Ah, escape, escape, tab. Oh, I know what's going on. Okay, menu, window. See, I can't see, you can't get a good picture of what it looks like until you change the window settings. So let's really zoom out. I'm going to change this as okay. I'm going to leave that as okay, but I, wanna, I need to see what's going on. Let's try negative 30 and 30. And then I'll talk to you what's going, what's going on. All right, so there's my equation. Do you see what's going on at 1? What is going on at 1? When I get closer and closer and closer to 1, it is a, it's approaching it here. But then all of a sudden, when I get closer and closer to 1 here, because it's in the denominator, it's called a vertical asymptote. It's a vertical asymptote. It's a line that you cannot cross. So I want to know where is this thing greater than 0. OK, so we got three numbers, uh, negative 2. 1 and 4. Those are our four. That are, those are our three numbers. We got to figure out what's going on to the left of negative 2, what's going on between negative 2 and negative 1, what's going on between 1 and 4, and what's going on at the right of 4. Okay? So let's take a look at negative 2. Negative 2 is right here. What's going on? It is negative. I don't want negative. So this is negative. I don't want negative. Let's look between negative 2 and 1. What's happening after negative 2 to the right? Oh, look, it's positive, 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 positive. It goes on forever and ever and ever. But never can it touch 1. It can't touch 1 because it's undefined at 1. It's, a, in, it's an inequality. So we're going to do open. And it doesn't have an equal to anyway. So we're going to do open circle here and open circle here. And between negative 2 and 1, it was positive. And that's what we want, right? We want positive. Now let's take a look between 1 and 4. Here's 1 and here's 4. So in between 1 and 4, you'll see that it is negative. I don't want negative. So I don't want that. This is negative. I don't want that. And let's look at 4. Between 4 and going to the right, as I go to the right with 4, it is that's right, positive. So open circle to the right. Now how do I write that up? Well, this one's pretty easy. Negative 2, 1. Notice I use parentheses because it doesn't equal to. The symbol for an inequality no, uh, in uh, interval notation is the U for union. 4, 2, positive infinity. All right, kids, that's it. That's how you solve rational equations, rational inequalities. Hope you enjoyed your show.